The Atari S-Drive Max is a floppy disk emulator for the Atari 8-bit computers. It has been around for a while, but somehow I never got around making one. It's actually a pretty easy project to do. So let's dive in and create it. To build the S-Drive Max you will need an Arduino Uno and a display module which includes an SD card reader. I have here the 2.8 inch ELI 9341 display module. Optionally, you might want to add a module called Uno2CO that will allow you to connect the S-Drive Max next to other Atari CO peripherals, like a floppy disk drive or a printer. More on that later. It's actually also a must to 3D print an enclosure for it. There are many available designs that can be downloaded for free. And you will definitely need a CO connector. As with most retro peripherals, these are not produced anymore. But luckily, someone has made a 3D model and made it available on Thingiverse. The description also mentions which contacts to use for the plug. Apparently, the contacts that can be pulled out of the AT power supply motherboard connector fit perfectly. But if you don't want to demolish your power supply plugs, these Molex connectors can also be purchased separately. The links for most of these items can be found in the description of this video. Let's start with the assembly of the Uno to CO board. This will allow the S-Drive Max to connect alongside other Atari CO peripherals like disk drive and printers. It's a small board that goes on top of the Arduino pin headers. This board uses one single IC 74LS07, which is a buffer that is used to interface between the Arduino Uno microcontroller and a CO device. It needs two 4.7 kilo ohm resistors. This board also offers connections that you can use to solder the wires that connect to the CO plug. And as an extra feature, you can use external 5V voltage to power the S-Drive Max or the 5 volts that is provided by Atari on the CO port. I intend to always use the external power adapter, so no extra jumpers or switches are needed to be installed on this board. We will also have to solder a 4-pin header to the Arduino board, so the Uno to CO PCB can connect. Let's solder our board. Cut off the leads and clean it up. To solder the 4-pin header, I will use a sticky tag to hold it in place. And clean it up with some IPA. Let's check if it will fit. And the board fits nicely. We can now proceed to solder on the CO wires and the connections that attach to the Arduino board. For the CO lead, I got this MIDI cable that was actually cheaper to buy instead of a separate 5 wire lead. Let's cut off the connector and check if it really has 5 leads inside. And it does. Now we can strip the wires. There is another lead that needs to be soldered to the Arduino board A5 pin. I will use this yellow wire to make the connection. Finally, we can proceed to solder the 5 leads to the CO connections on this small board. Align the Uno to CO board with the Arduino spin headers, then solder it in place. And of course, we can't forget the yellow wire that attaches to the A5 pin on the Arduino. Let's keep it nice and tidy and clean up the board with IPA. I will trim the ends of the leads that are sticking out. Now proceeding to the other end of the cable where the actual CO connector will be placed. First step is to strip the wires. The Molex connectors should then fit into the opening of this 3D printed CO plug. I have the scrimping pliers and I am optimistic that one of the jaws will successfully crimp the connectors to the wires. Well, maybe with a little bit of help from those nose needle pliers. Now it's just a matter of fitting them inside the plug. Well, easier said than done. 
Let's hope that I can push them a bit further with this small screwdriver. It's good enough, I think. Before we close up the CO connector, there are some holes that need to be punched as the 3D printer did not do that. Or maybe this was by design. I will use the small screwdriver to do this. Let's try to push it in. We will worry about the loose cable inside the connector later. First, it needs a 3mm nut and then a small 3mm bolt. Apparently, the hole is a bit too small. I will pre-drill that later. For now, let's just quickly secure the screw so the connector will be functional. We are more or less done with the electronic part. Let's now focus on the software part. I will be doing the Arduino programming inside Ubuntu Linux. This is because it's needed in order to compile to the latest version of the S-Drive Max project. It is not a dedicated Linux machine though, but a VirtualBox instance that is running on a Windows host. But it will work fine. You can also program the S-Drive Max in a different way, by following the steps described on the Atari 8-bit.net website. But I will not dive deeper into it in this video. First. Let's prepare all the tools needed in order to compile the project. This is the GitHub repository of the S-Drive Max project. We can see all of the created releases in this overview. And version 1.3 is the latest. There are a couple of older releases when we scroll down the page. But when we go back to the main page and click here, we see that there is another branch called version 14. And I believe that this is the latest development because it is several commits ahead of the master branch. We can download this version of the code and unpack it. Now we are going to install a couple of tools. The first one is XA65, which is a 6502 compiler. I have already installed it on my machine, so I am getting this message. Other tools that we will need are the AVR toolchain and some libraries that will help compile and program the Arduino board. These are also already installed on my system. To compile the S-Drive Max code, we change to the downloads directory. Then the extracted SMAX folder and we type the command make all. After a while, we will have a compiled binary that we can now write to our Arduino Uno. There are multiple versions of the S-Drive Max binaries compiled into various versions based on the screen that it is using. And I have one that uses the ELI 9341 chipset. Inside this directory there are two files that we need to upload to the Arduino. The first one is eeprom underscore writer dot hex. I will copy and paste the exact avr dot command to do this. After the programming cycle is finished, we can unplug the USB, connect the screen, and power it up again. We will see a couple of progress bars of writing and verifying the EEPROM on the screen. After this is finished, we can proceed to the next part of uploading the other file, which is called sdrive.hex. When I cross its display, then it was a success, and the sdrive max was successfully uploaded. Touch the calibration crosses and then tap one more time to enter the interface. Perfect, everything is looking great. Now it's time to prepare an SD card for Atari disk or cassette tape images. The S-Drive Max supports SD cards up to 32GB. Using a larger card will result in this error. However, when I formatted this 16GB SD card as FAT32, as mentioned in the instructions, it gave me another error. A search inside the issue of the S-Drive Max repository yielded that most newer SD cards don't initialize well. It seems that there is no solution to this problem as of yet, but I have noticed that when you power the S-Drive Max using a 1 ampere USB power adapter, like this one from Apple, it does not give me any errors. Directly connecting to a USB port on the computer also does not show any errors. So it may have to do something with the power supply. 
Fortunately, I have found a smaller 2GB SD card where that problem does not occur. First, we need to copy the sdrive.atr file from the sworld folder inside the GitHub repository. After that, we can copy the other image files. The order in copying these files does matter. Before placing the Arduino and the screen inside an enclosure, I want to add one last thing to this setup, which will be status LEDs, that will allow to see if the S drive max is on and if there is any activity on the CO port. That is actually a suggestion from DevZine, who is the author of this mod and also designed a nice circuit board for it. The link to his project and website are in the description. For now, I will just hack in the LEDs, but will certainly get one of these nicely designed PCBs in the future. First, I have created the circuit on a breadboard and made sure it's working correctly. Now you can see me soldering all of the wires and LEDs to the Arduino board. After connecting it to an Atari, which is off screen, you can see that the red power LED is on and the blue LED, which indicates disk activity, is flashing. It is time to pre-drill some holes in the enclosure for the LEDs and put the Arduino with the screen inside of it. That was easier said than done, because the enclosure is really tidy and there is a specific way to insert it. First, you need to insert the screen into the slot and then carefully maneuver and fiddle with the Arduino Uno board to fit it snugly into the enclosure. It took me quite some time to get it right, but I will spare you in showing all of the footage that I have recorded. However, I am sure that a complete video could be made just on the subject. Before we are going to do some tests with the S Drive Max, just let me finish the enclosure and the CO plug. The loose cable inside the plug's enclosure can be secured with a hot glue gun, preventing it from being accidentally pulled out. Additionally, I have widened the holes to fit a 3mm screw, ensuring a snug fit. The backplate of the S Drive Max enclosure can be attached with self tapping screws. I found some that fit almost perfectly. Although they protrude slightly, adding rubber pads will prevent them from scratching any surface or desk where the device is placed. The 3D printed enclosure also includes covers that can be inserted into the power connectors, protecting them from dust and debris. Let's turn on the S Drive Max and configure its settings. If your screen is unresponsive to touch input, you can reset it by holding the screen while plugging in the power. Then calibrate the screen by tapping on the crosses as usual. The default screen orientation is a bit awkward, with the plugs facing the front of the device. Fortunately, you can rotate it. Tap the configuration button, select rotate and press save, and redo the calibration. The screen should now be rotated, and DevSyn status LEDs will be clearly visible. Additionally, the device will remember the rotated settings when you reconnect it, which is very convenient. Finally, it's time to test and play with the device. I'll start by connecting it to my Atari 800XL computer. I will connect the CU cable directly from the 1050 Atari disk drive to the Atari 800XL and daisy chain the S Drive Max back to the second CU connector on the disk drive. This setup will allow us to test if the S Drive Max functions properly alongside other CO devices. When we turn on the computer without touching any settings on the S Drive Max, it will start up with the default file selection utility called S Drive.ATR and it will be loaded using the internal D0 drive. You can mount the ATR files into one of the four available drive slots, D1 through D4. Let's browse through the catalog of games that I've copied to the SD card. Perhaps we can look for Boulder Dash. You can navigate faster by scrolling through the pages using the left and right arrow keys. Ah, there it is. Unfortunately, we can't see the full names of the files as they are truncated to the old 8 character DOS format. We can mount the file by pressing Enter and selecting the drive. Let's choose the one as it is the boot disk. 
our selection also shows up on the screen of S Drive Max. And this is not Boulder Dash, but another game called Boulder Bombers. Oh well, let's remember that for the next time. So let's try to copy a physical disk to a virtual one on the S Drive Max. To do that, we are going to click on the D1 slot and click on New. Then by clicking on the second slot, we make the new disk D2 drive. This way we can boot from the 1050 disk, as the S Drive Max is now not using it. You can see here that the source drive is D1 and destination drive is D2, which is the empty disk on the S Drive Max drive. We can now start copying the disk. I will speed up the process just a bit. And it's complete. When we take a look on the screen of the S Drive Max, we can see that the name has changed to an internal name. To test it, let's unplug the 1050 drive and connect the S Drive Max directly to the Atari. Now, when we mount this newly created disk to the D1 slot and boot the computer, we can see that our copy program has been loaded. Let's test now the capability of the S Drive Max as a cassette. For example, if we select Bruce Lee and then start the Atari computer by pressing the Start and Option keys, we will hear the famous beep. Now we can click on Start on the S Drive Max and then press the spacebar on the computer to initiate loading. The screen displays the progress by showing how many blocks have been loaded. I will speed things a bit and let the game finish loading. Let's now have some fun and play it. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more content like this, then please subscribe to my channel. Your support helps me keep creating valuable content. I'd also appreciate if you could like this video and leave a comment with your thoughts or any questions you might have. Feel free to share this video with friends who might find it interesting. Don't forget to hit the notification bell to stay updated on my latest uploads. Your feedback and interaction are incredibly valuable to me and I'm always eager to hear what you think. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.